Hello everyone, my name is Cliff and welcome back to my channel. This is Cliff's Dark Gems. And welcome to my first ever book haul where I went and bought a selection of vintage horror paperbacks, uh, some other paperbacks and all sorts of interesting stuff. So please stay tuned and enjoy. Okay everyone, I'm not going to talk at length about any of these books. I uh, bought them at a, our local bookstore just up the road and I have to say they were very cheap, sort of the South African dollar equivalent of maybe one or two dollars each and that includes the hardbacks, uh, so I got them for a very good deal. Now I'm going to start with the paperbacks uh, and some of them have the most awesome covers and then I'm going to move on to some other paperbacks, one or two non-horror and then finally with a couple of hardcover books, beauties that I found. So, let's begin. First of all, now this book, <laughs> I kind of bought for the cover. I don't really know much about it from what I've read at the back, and that is to the vanishing point. How's that for a cover? I know that it is a very weird, sort of, seems like a weird mix of fantasy, sci-fi and horror, uh, sort of a family road trip, picking up a hitchhiker. So I'm going to be going into this completely blind at some stage. But it does look like a very weird, weird, fascinating read. That is to the vanishing point. Okay, second book I'm going to present is Sean Hudson Slates. Now, I've been tracking this book down for a little while because I watched a video by Ollie from Criminally. Uh, check out his awesome channel. He talks about horror, crime fiction, that kind of thing. And he's very knowledgeable and he's very, very well read as well. But this just looks absolutely hysterical. I think it's going to be gory fun and kind of creative and original to create a monster movie or not about rats or bats but about flesh eating slugs. So this looks like a lot of fun. I just love all of these covers. I think that's why I've worn my t-shirt today because they kind of match the macabre nature of these covers. So that slugs. Okay, next we've got something a little different. A John Coyne Hobgoblin. A little bit of magic. I think it's about a goblin that uh, takes on this family. Uh, it's, just, it's just not ordinary family until one stormy, violent Halloween night the deadly truth about the house emerges. And Hobgoblin rises to destroy all those he loves. Oh, okay, so he was probably one of a family. Maybe he was transformed. And then he became this, a Hobgoblin. That sounds like a lot of fun. I have heard of John Coyne. Um, definitely going to give this a read at some stage. Okay, let's see what else we got. Okay, next we got another creature feature. It seems like a popular thing with these books. And that is Guy M. Smith, Carnival. Now, I'm going to read the back because I have no idea what this book is about, so let me just briefly give you an idea. The first victim to die on the Corby estate is a starving poacher condemned to a terrible end by both man and beast. He is not the last. The mad Earl of Corby's ancient law has been rep repelled and blood sports are to be allowed once more on the land. Sounds interesting. Oh, there are. But the pact with nature broken, the wildlife turn on their killers. Savage, predatory and murderous. They seek and take revenge on the flesh and blood of those who dare defy the Corby curse. So, yeah, all of these sound like a lot of fun. Uh, real 70s, gory, just creature features and nasties. And I'm really going to try and track a lot of these kind of books down. It seems like our bush bookstore up the road has a lot of this kind of book um, very old trashy novels so I'm looking forward to going back again next month and tracking down a few more of these kind of titles uh, I'm looking forward to also to get a Kindle this is a little bit besides the point but I'd love to see some new releases and so on which I won't find in our little shop so until then you're gonna have to be 
intrigue my, my old school horror. Next up we have Ramsey Campbell. I read a couple of his books already, but this cover is just something else. And that is cold print. Uh, that looks like a Komodo dragon of some sort, some sort of mutated Komodo dragon. And actually Stephen King is spoken about in the likes of Stephen King. Someone says he's Britain's answer to Stephen King. Surely the most sophisticated stylist in modern horror. And we have yet another creature feature. This time with locusts. Guy and Smith locusts. Now, I know that locusts are infamous for sometimes destroying cropland in southern Africa. You have swarms of them coming over and absolutely causing havoc. Uh, but I've never heard of them doing this before. So this is something special. Um, let me read the back as well. It seems the start of a glorious summer. Probably not so much. As Alan Alton and his family settle into their new home in the Shropshire Hills, then the insects start to appear. First there's one, then hundreds, thousands, millions. A smothering tide of destruction covers the land. I bet you anything he was inspired by the fact that locusts destroy cropland. Well, obviously. Okay. As the heat wave continues, weeks after weeks, the horde of invaders grow. A hideous red-eyed devastation spreading across town and country, biting, stripping, devouring everything and everyone in its path. So, another delightful tale by Guy Ensmith. Okay, and the final seriously demented paperback uh, nasty that I bought is Brian Lumley Necroscope 4 Dead Speak. Uh, not in the best of condition, but uh, I love the skull in the front. Now, I have the first one already, which is going to be on my TBR for next month, which is Necroscope. And I know that this is part of a four-part series, and I saw the fourth part, and I thought, okay, now all I need is part one and number part two. I can't really tell you too much about Necroscope. I've heard very good things about it. Uh, it's kind of a vampire and a necromancer and it takes place in history and I don't know a hell of a lot of about it but uh, I think when I pre present it on my TBR I'll let you know more about what I'm expecting when I read it. Okay, now for something completely different we get to some other paperbacks and this is a book I've been tracking down for a long time. I've heard it is very creepy, very unsettling um, and kind of disturbing, and that is John Fowles, The Collector. Now this is more just a piece of fiction, and it's to do with a man who collects butterflies, and he sees a beautiful woman, and he decides he wants her. So he kidnaps her, <laughs> keeps her at home, uh, with the kind of feeling that maybe she might just love him one day. So he abducts her. I don't know where the story goes from there, um, but come on, that's kind of creepy. So it's an abduction, abduction story. John Fowles, the collector. In previous videos I've spoken about how much I love Roald Dahl. Now, I've read so much Roald Dahl. Absolutely weird thing is that I don't have him anymore. I don't have any copies of any of these books. So I found this at the store and decided to get it. Now this contains both uh, the tales of the unexpected and more tales of the unexpected. So it's pretty much most of the horror short stories or you know the humor, the fantasy short stories that he's written. So I'm actually very glad I found a copy. When we moved here we lost a lot of stuff and I lost a lot of books and one of the books that I lost is in my top 10 horror novels of all time. When I found it again, yesterday, when I went shopping, I was over the moon. Although it's not the same cover, let the right one in. John Linquist uh, is a little bit tatty around the edges, but I am so relieved to own this copy again. I was, I was devastated when my other one went missing. That is, let the right one in. Okay, now we're going to something 
even more different. Uh, this is not normally the kind of book that I would buy, but I have been watching Michael K. Vaughan's channel for quite a while, and this is someone he loves, so I was inspired to pick it up, and that is The Great Tales of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who actually created the, uh, the character of Sherlock Holmes as well. Now, Michael K. Vaughan's got an awesome channel. He talks about all sorts of things besides horror and classic horror. He's got such a sense of humor. Please check out his channel. It's also in that space below, that dark space below. Okay, now we move on to the last four that I've got here to show you. Uh, it's all hard covers. They are also dirt cheap. I mean, I got these for if talking American dollars, two dollars, one dollar. Um, first thing is a John Connolly Every Dead Thing. Now this is a gorgeous cover. I've read The Book of Lost Things, which I've spoken about in other videos. I've read Nocturnes, uh, but this is more a crime, mystery, thriller kind of story. I think with the detective that Charlie Parker, which is very popular, and this is actually the first novel he wrote. I do remember, I don't know when it was, a couple of years ago, maybe three, four years ago, trying out this novel and not enjoying it as much as I thought I would. But now that I'm getting back into crime a little bit, I'm definitely going to give this a read. And following on from that, is another John Connolly, The White Road. Um, and this is further on in the series, so I won't read it immediately, but I'll wait till I've got maybe two or three of his other books. Okay, and penultimately, I picked up Shadowland by Peter Straw. Now this is a dark fantasy stroke horror uh, by the same author that wrote Ghost Story. It's not, in my opinion, it's not quite as good as Ghost Story, but it is still a fantastic coming of age adventure. These two boys become apprentices to this magician in this dark wood where he lives, um, and it's a magical tale. But this was another copy that I actually lost. I used to own this, not in hardcover, so I'm delighted to have this back. Okay everyone, the final book that I bought is Billy by Whitley Strieber. Now this is another abduction tale, uh, it's disturbing, it's nasty, uh, this revolting man is described as overweight and quite big, decides to grab a child and keep him in the cellar or keep him under the house and yeah, I don't think I'm in the mood for this kind of story just yet. After we after I read this month, we need to talk about Kevin. Uh, that disturbed me enough. I think I need to start with something lighter next month. Maybe Slugs and Locusts. Um, you know, just these creatures killing off people and eating their flesh. That sounds far more charming than abductions and mass murders and so on. Okay everyone, that was my first book haul for the year. I thoroughly enjoyed that. I don't think I'm going to be doing too many more for this year anyway. I actually can't wait to get a Kindle so that I can start talking about some more up-to-date horror. Uh, hopefully that will happen soon, but I really hope you enjoyed this. And please be sure to like and subscribe. And if you think I should read any of those books next month and add them to my TBR, please let me know in the comments below. And tell me which ones you've read, which ones you've read, which ones you've enjoyed. I would really love to hear from you. Until next time, take care, keep those pages turning, and cheers.